Hello my dears, my name is Mariana and welcome to my channel. So we're going to talk about something that means quite a lot to me today. Uh, we're going to talk about the Black Madonna. I asked everyone what topics would get them excited, what things they really wanted to dive into, and of course everybody is so fascinated with the archetypes of the Divine Feminine. And no discussion is complete without diving deep into the Black Madonna, what she is, why she's so important, and most importantly, what her darkness really means. Personally, the Black Madonna has been a central figure in my own feminist spirituality. At this point, I've made at least three pilgrimages to different Black Madonnas across Europe, and I want to share with you not only what gets me so excited and so connected to her, but just really looking into what her significance is across history and across experience. So we're going to dive into the Black Madonna and discover why she's so essential to bring into your divine feminine awareness, maybe into your practice. Um, so let's do it. So in our discussion of the Divine Feminine, maybe the Black Madonna is not somebody you hear about right away, but she is one of the figures of the Divine Feminine that holds the most fervor and excitement even today. Countless millions make pilgrimage to Black Madonnas every year. The Black Madonna of Einsiedeln in Switzerland gets about 500,000 visitors a year. The Black Madonna of Montserrat in Spain gets about 1 million. And the Black Madonna of Czestochowa in Poland gets 4 million pilgrims yearly. The Black Madonnas have been calling people to them for almost a millennium. There is something about the image of the Black Madonna that is different than the normal European depictions of Mary we're used to. Being fair-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, and of course, if we were to look at the historical Mary, she was probably none of those things. But the Black Madonna is not about historical accuracy. It is about archetypal significance. So this is editing Mariana here, and I just wanted to clarify a point that I think I just didn't dive enough into, but it's important enough to make sure to bring up in this discussion. In this video, when I'm talking about the Black and White Madonna, I'm talking about archetypal figures. I'm talking about their blackness and whiteness in its archetypal symbolic significance. And that's not at all to discount the fact that this conversation does have significance in the context of our contemporary white supremacist patriarchy. But for our conversation today, we're not talking about her the way we would real living people of the 21st century. Instead, we're talking about her as she was in the medieval era as an archetype of liberated femininity. Okay, that's it. That's my spiel. Let's get back to the show. When we approach the Black Madonna, whether that be in images or, or actually making a pilgrimage, there is an experience of awe, of power and potency that is different than our typical visions of Mary. And so when we're discussing the Black Madonna, there are two obvious and extremely large questions that always come up. First is, what makes her so important? Why are there so many pilgrims going to the Black Madonna? What is the lore? And second, why are these figures of Mary in the very white, very patriarchal Europe, black? Ultimately, these two questions kind of have the same answer, but we'll start with the second one because it's a little bit easier to tackle. So the origins of the Black Madonna actually find their roots in the 12th to 14th century in Europe. Something very interesting started to happen. All of a sudden we see these Marian cults, these groups of Christians who really devoted themselves to Mary. And now this was a little bit complicated because as of the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD, Mary was officially described as somebody who held no divinity. Which basically means although we are allowed to show reverence to Mary, we're not technically allowed to worship her. But in these Marian cults, but in these Marian cults, but in these Marian cults, we start to see exactly that. We see people sending their prayers to her, asking her for sacred healing and divine guidance, and asking her even to secure their salvation. And so we start to see Mary become sort of a goddess, even though technically she's not one. If you want a little proof that these Marian cults existed, um, go to France and look at any cathedral. 
they're all called Notre Dame de something. That's why. So as these cathedrals and churches rose up that were devoted to Mary, we start to see more figures of Mary, more images, statues, and paintings. And over time in these churches, there would be a lot of smoke in the air and incense, and maybe there was a fire at some point. So a lot of these statues and paintings started to get a dark tint on the skin. So a lot of historians would tell you that's the reason, it was just circumstance. But there's just as much evidence that many of them were intentionally painted black. And many of those that became black over time with soot and ash, their blackness was maintained. Basically, the black skin of the Madonnas were essential to their reverence, to their holy significance. Jungian theorists, Eleanor Dixon and Marion Woodman, even suggest that it was during the Crusades when European warriors were going to the Middle East and to Africa that they came in contact with these black goddesses, these dark feminine figures, and brought back those images with them. They saw figures like Isis and Inanna and something got stirred up, a new vision of divine femininity. They also suggest that with the rise of courtly love, the idealized, pure, perfect feminine, which Mary often represented, we needed this compensating figure. We needed the other side. We needed the darkness, the earthiness, the power. As Jungian analyst Ian Begg writes, the Black Virgin is a Christian phenomenon as well as a preservation of the ancient goddesses and compensates for the one-sided conscious attitudes of the age. Basically what all of this means is that the Black Madonna's dark skin was no accident. It meant something profound. And so that brings us to that first question, why do we care so much about the Black Madonna? Dixon and Woodman point out that the words positive and negative do not ultimately apply. They become judgmental words. In feminine thinking, we hold the paradox beyond contradictions. The Black Madonna is the flux of life in which creation gives place to destruction. Destruction in service to life gives place to creation. It is the darkness of the Black Madonna that symbolizes her depth. It points to the natural feminine wisdom of the great goddess, to the cycles of life, to, like Sophia, the spiritual transformation. And if you haven't seen my video on Sophia, definitely check that out. I do mention the Black Madonna in that video, and I think that'll give you a lot more context for the discussion we're having now. So maybe go watch that right after this and uh, it'll make a lot of sense. So what we learn from the Black Madonna is that people in the Middle Ages were reaching for this deeper, more unconscious, more potent experience of the archetypal feminine. They were seeking connection with the autonomous goddess. And they couldn't get that from the vision of Mary that they had at the time. As Ian Begg writes, the traditional Mary acts as the statutory female on a patriarchal board essentially hostile to women and nature. But the Black Madonna, or as he calls it, the Black Virgin, embodies nature. She is the depths of the earth itself. She is an archetypal rebellion, the call to an older, ancient feminine wisdom. While Mary's whiteness points to her purity, the Black Madonna's darkness points to her liberated sexuality. While the Pale Madonna is focused in the maternal light as the caretaker of the divine masculine, the Black Madonna is seen in her virginal aspect, which does not mean her sexlessness, and instead means her own agency and power. She does not need to be in relation to a man, and the Christ child that sits on her lap draws from her power rather than she protecting his. And so what all of this comes together to say is that the Black Madonna was worshipped because she is autonomous. She was worshipped because she symbolized her own power, because people were drawn to the fact that she opened us to a deeper wisdom, to our own unconscious depths. And this is something that I want to spend a little bit more time focused on and really looking at through the work of scholar Robert Graves. Now, poor Robert Graves, nobody takes him seriously, and that is miserable. He was a really smart dude. If you don't know about Robert Graves, he wrote a book called The White Goddess. It's cool. So Robert Graves' book, The White Goddess, basically dives into the image of the triple goddess, the image of goddess's muse, the image of what Carl Jung would call the anima. It is really a book of devotion and reverence, but at the same time looks at the history of the archetypal feminine. So if you haven't taken a look at the white goddess before, I really recommend it, but keep in mind, 
it's it can be a lot, but it's really interesting and it's something that is very, very illuminating. And what a lot of people don't know is that Robert Graves, the white goddess, had sort of a, a shorter counterpart. And this one was called Memo and the Black Goddess. So while Graves describes the white goddess as the muse, the love bringer, and he contrasts that to the black goddess who he argues does not abide as patiently and cooperatively with the laws of the male sphere. He writes, The black goddess is so far hardly more than a word of hope whispered among the few who have served their apprenticeship to the white goddess. She promises a new pacific bond between men and women, corresponding to final reality of love, in which the patriarchal marriage bond will fade away. What this means is that a core theme of the Black Madonna was the healing of the patriarchal wound. And I know that sounds like a lot. I mean, when we think about it in reality, this is just an image, a statue of Mary that for some reason has dark skin. How could it possibly mean all of that? Weren't the people of the Middle Ages totally unaware of patriarchy at all? And yeah, all of that is true. But when we are talking about these things, we're talking about archetypes. We're talking about experiences that exist in the unconscious. So that means the medieval people, while they were not consciously trying to bring up Isis from the underground, there was an unconscious pull in them to discover something that they innately held within, but that they didn't know how to specifically name. And I agree with Graves that the Black Madonna rose from the collective unconscious with a purpose. I think there's no accident that she came in that moment of history when we had had so many millennia of patriarchal pressure and repression of the feminine. There was an integral, spiritual, essential call for the archetype of the feminine, the divine feminine, to be reclaimed in a way that we could finally remake a relationship with her. And maybe it really was a happy accident. Maybe it was the soot from incense or just a figure of Isis discovered by some wandering crusader. However, the Black Madonna first got sparked in the imagination of the European medieval people, it really took hold. It had meaning and it was opening them to something deeper. I believe the purpose of the Black Madonna was to heal the injustice of the patriarchal contract. I believe she was born through the unconscious of the men and women who lived at the time, who on some extremely deep level knew they were missing something, knew they were missing that connection to the divine feminine. They knew her in their bones, but not in their minds. And that's what the collective unconscious is. It's our ancestral memory. And that memory remembers the great goddess who we lost. And if you don't know too much about how we lost that great goddess, there's a video for you here, go check that out. It is really, really important to understand why the divine feminine is a topic we need to talk about so much today, why we're trying to reclaim it. Um, and that video explains it, so go watch it. So the purpose of the image of the Black Madonna is to remember the autonomy of the divine feminine, to remember the power that she innately holds that is not given to her by God or son or father or husband but is entirely her own. It is the symbol of that autonomy inside the female body that awakens us to the primal power of nature, of wisdom, of feminine experience. Visiting the Black Madonna is one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had in my life. Not only because looking at this ancient thing is astounding, but because when you sit at her feet, there is something that comes, there's something that, that is known there. There's a wisdom and a wonder and, and an awe at the fact that somehow she pressed her way back into being. And you know, maybe that's getting a little bit weird. I am one of the people that thinks archetypes like to do their own thing sometimes. So, you know, that's me. And whether or not you believe the Black Madonna was Isis reborn or drew from the legacy of the ancient goddess or that she was just something that kind of captured the hearts and minds of our ancestors, you have to acknowledge the incredible power of the image. And our work as sacred feminists, or as those who are interested in the archetype of the divine feminine, the reclamation of the divine feminine, 
is to be conscious of these images, to know them, to bring them in with awareness into our practice, into our knowledge, and into our exploration. What we learn from the Black Madonna is how to sit in our own power, is how to take it back from those who have taken it from us. And there's no war involved, there's no confrontation. It just is. It is by her being alone that she restored her own power to herself. The Black Madonna is a figure of majesty and wonder and wisdom, and I hope you get the opportunity to see her one day in whatever form she takes for you. And I think that that is our conversation for today, my friends. I hope that this was inspiring, illuminating, and um, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, and you should also go follow me on Instagram for some daily wisdom and witchery and wonderful things. So go read about the Black Madonna, go check her out, go see some of those magnificent images, and have a beautiful, meaningful day. You guys have not stopped. These cats, man. <laughs> <laughs>